Hi, this is Casey Glass for Worship Synths, and I'm going to quickly show you how to sync main stage to an outside MIDI clock. And in this case, we're going to use Ableton, but it would be the same if you had a metronome that sent MIDI clock or any other app. It could be another main stage uh, running on a different computer or even some other app on the same computer. It'll, it'll all work the same. So the first thing you need to do is to bring that MIDI in from somewhere. So on whatever MIDI source you have, you need to make sure it's sending its MIDI clock out on some channel. So you have to look at the instructions for that. I'll show you how to do it with Ableton, but for other hardware, you just have to look at the instructions. And so we're going to go ahead and pop Ableton up. And in Ableton, we're going to go to Preferences. And down here under MIDI Sync is where we're going to do some stuff. So. Uh, initially, this will all have nothing in it. So, like under output, it'll there'll be no output. All these things will be turned off, and we're going to make sure that they end up turned on. So, we want all these things on. If instead you're going to sync Ableton to something else, you would turn the inputs on so that they would be receiving MIDI clock from somewhere. All right. So, with those things done, now Ableton is sending its own MIDI clock out on. In this case, the IAC driver, which is uh, Apple's own internal MIDI driver that sends MIDI between applications. Um, but you could, if you had an interface connected, select a MIDI port on that interface and send it out there. So you could send it to pedals, you could send it to another Mac across the stage, you could do whatever. You could send it to front of house if you wanted to sync uh, you know, time-based effects on the front of house console. All that stuff would, would be able to be done. All right, so at that point, Ableton is, is kind of ready to go. So we're going to switch back to main stage, which is where all the action is. Uh, where'd my heads up go? Uh, there I am again. That's better. All right. So in main stage, we have to do a little bit of work. So here I have opened up just a brand new um, concert. It's the uh, basic keyboard concert. We need to go to the concert level, and then we're going to come over here to timing and select get tempo from MIDI input, and we're going to choose the IAC driver. So at this point now, the tempo inside main stage is going to sync to um, the Ableton tempo. So again, if we go back over to Ableton, if we switch the tempo here to uh, 80 beats a minute, you will see that main stage uh, will go to 80 beats per Per minute but I have to actually start this running. So you hear the metronome there running and now you can see that main stage is following that clock. Alright and over here we're actually we're going to turn the metronome off because I want you to be able to hear the main stage metronome when we get it going. So we're going to make sure that's on. All right, so now the next thing we want to do is we, we have the tempo for main stage slaved, but the beat markers are going to be off because whenever Ableton starts, main stage hasn't started. And you're going to start main stage, but then beat one is not necessarily the same as beat one in Ableton, and that's a big headache. Uh, and so essentially, ideally, we would like them both to start at the same spot. And that's the big problem with beat syncing. We've been talking online about trying to get the ones to all end up in the same spot. And it's really, unless the clocks start running at the same time, that's hard to do. Uh, the protocol that handles that is called MIDI machine control. So that's the play, stop, rewind commands that go over MIDI. And main stage does not automatically have a way to slave to outside MIDI machine control. Uh, but don't fear, we can set that up. So we're going to go over to layout. One of the annoying things in my mind is that main stage requires an on-screen control for any kind of parameter you want to map to it. So we need two buttons. And I'm going to make one of these buttons. We're going to bring in it, the IAC driver, and we're going to pick as our command. Uh, we want type, uh, single value. And we're going to run down to the bottom of all the CCs to start, stop, reset. And so we're going to try uh, MIDI Machine Control Play. And then over here, I'm going to go to MIDI Machine Control Stop. And hopefully, if I did that right, this will work. And then again, we want to change these to single, single value. 
That one's single value. This one's single value. So the first thing to do is actually make sure that they work. So let's hit those buttons. Where do they go? They're not here. I don't know why they didn't show up. Maybe I just didn't see them. There is a little glare on my screen. We'll go to edit mode and see if they work. Nope, because unmapped. Well, that's not quite right. Oh, yeah, I forgot to give it its destination. So the mapping that we want is going to be actions play. There we go. So now that one plays. And this one was our stop. So we're going to go to actions stop. How about that? There we go. Now we got what we want. So now we can play and stop the main stage master clock. And if I hop over to Ableton, you'll see the only click that's playing right now is main stage's click. So if I hop over here, oh, uh, it didn't work. I might have to switch this. So instead of MIDI machine control play, I just do start. And then uh, instead of MIDI machine control, Stop, we'll just do stop, and I think that will make it work. Let's see. Yep, there we go. So we have main stages click running, and you can see that the ones are landing on the ones if you listen for the higher pitched tick. Now, the one place where this doesn't work is if you are inside Ableton and instead of relaunching in the Ableton clock, you see every time I hit the space bar, which is how I'm triggering this, it starts over at 1. If instead we were to play from the position we're at, it does not start main stage. And so that is kind of a problem that I have not yet solved. All right, so now we have tempo synced. We have the clocks running at the same time. The only problem is that the MIDI tempo code is a little bit sloppy. So you may still have things kind of come off at times. And you can still tap in a tempo, even though it's slaving, um, and you'll kind of override the slaved tempo. So if you needed to, you could tap uh, a little bit more accurate tempo if things really came off. But here, if we run the uh, Ableton metronome, You can see although the clicks sound not quite even, they're hitting at the same intervals. And so that's about as tight as you can get it. Um, the only way to make it tighter would be to implement a true MIDI machine control and MIDI time code lock, which MainStage currently doesn't support and hasn't supported, I think, pretty much forever. MainStage generally wants to be the master and to tell other things what to do. So how would we make that happen? All right, so let's look at how we're going to slave main something else to main stage. So to do that, uh, we're going to go undo this. So we're going to get rid of uh, our outside timing. And we're going to go to layout and delete our two buttons because we don't want Ableton to trigger things anymore. And uh, in the edit mode, oh, there's my other window. We need an instrument channel external instrument channel and we don't really need a MIDI input but we do need a MIDI output which is again going to be the IAC bus driver. So we're going to make that and so now essentially everything MIDI that happens is going to go out on this driver. Uh, we can send it on all channels because we'll just make sure that everything everything that happens goes out there. And we're going to go over to Ableton and again in the preferences We'll turn off our output sync and turn on our input sync to the bus driver. So now Ableton should be getting its clock from main stage. And so if, for example, here in the concert we were to set 120 and hit play, Ableton should also play at 120. Oh, no, it didn't sync up. Stop that. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Yeah, no, it looks like it should be. Let's see if there's something going on over here. So there's our output channel, MIDI output. Aha, that's what I forgot. Start sending MIDI clocks, send start message, send stop message. 
So essentially we're going to make sure that it is um, communicating completely over to Ableton. So now let's give it a shot. Make sure Ableton is looking good, it's looking good. So if we hit start here, we should have gotten the start over here, but it's not syncing up at all. Aha, there we go. So Ableton needs to be set to external, which, which I forgot. So let's stop it and start again. You can see Ableton's running. I turned the click off, so we're not hearing it. But now Ableton is running. So again, it was the external button that I forgot to click. So now we've triggered Ableton with main stage, and we could send other MIDI commands along with that, like next track and that sort of thing. And so you would just map your MIDI controls as you would need to for that. And that's about it. And so that would also be the same for another instance of main stage or uh, really anything else that you wanted to do. So you stopped. Ableton is also stopped. We hit start again. Ableton is going to start over because this button up here starts the master clock for main stage. So this turning this off returns main stage to beat 111 and hitting play will start it from there. And so you can actually see that over in Ableton that every time we hit play we go back to 111. Uh, again, so any other external equipment that needs MIDI sync is going to be the same way, and so you can hook that up. It could be another instance of main stage. It could be almost anything. I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, please hit us up over on Facebook at uh, the Worship Musicians Main Stage uh, Facebook group or Omnisphere Worship Sounds, and uh, look for me on the blog. Thanks a lot. Bye.